so today we are looking at lead code number 63 a question called unique paths 2 and this is very similar to its predecessor unique paths 1 the only difference is is this one we have uh, obstacles and we have to figure out how do we get the paths in spite of having obstacles so we can take a look at the prompt um, a robot is located at the top left corner of an M by N grid robot can either move down or right at any point in time the robot is trying to reach the bottom right corner of the grid and now consider obstacles are added to the grids how many unique paths would there be an obstacle and space is marked by 1 and 0 respectively in the grid okay so here we have a 3 by 3 grid and we can see that if we want to get to this finish here where the star is then there's two ways we can get there we can either go all the way um, across and then down or all the way down and across but we cannot we cannot hit this obstacle right here we cannot go through the middle in any way and the grid is given us given to us in an input as uh, a 2d array where ones represent the obstacle and zeros represent where a, a clear path might be and here we have an obstacle grid where if if it's over here then there's only one way to get there and that's from um, down and to the right okay so let's take a look at this conceptually okay so if we have if we have a grid let's say we have um, a grid here and we can just have arbitrary numbers on how many how many um, how many rows and columns we have so let's say we have one two three four and five and we'll do one two three four and five okay so now we have to think about this where like unique pads one and if you haven't watched the video on unique pads one it's good probably a good idea to take a look at that because this is building off of a, a similar pattern it's called tabulation we want to create a grid a table that keeps track of certain values and we want to initially fill that table in with those certain values and from there we can iterate over our inputs or our table and we can calculate the values for the rest of that table based off of those initial inputs so in unique paths one what we did was we just filled in all the initial values as a one because we could go either across or we could go down. Those would be the initial values of all the different paths. And from there, we could figure out how to fill in the rest of the grid. The way we did it was we would just add whatever was on top and whatever was to the left of it. And we would just take the sum of that and fill it in there. And so we could do, this would be three, uh, this would be three right here, this would be six, and so forth and so on, right? But we can't do that with this because with this we have obstacles so even when we're initially filling out this grid what if we have what if we have an obstacle right here right then we cannot get to the rest of this grid and we would we would basically have to fill out the rest of these as zeros right if we had an obstacle here so again these the rest of these would be zeros and then what would that mean for the rest of the table well we would have to we can still use the same method to fill out the rest of the table but any time in the table like let's say let's say all of these were one and we didn't have any obstacles but let's say we had an obstacle right here right and so we're filling out the table as we iterate through it this would be two this would be three this would be four um, let's see here this would be three this would be six now when we get to this there's an obstacle here because there's an obstacle here we can't add up these paths because we can't get here there's there's an obstacle so what we could do in our table is that anytime we have an obstacle we can just fill the value as zero in that particular point in the table right and so then when we move on in any other point uh, any other way through the table we can assume that there is an obstacle there and it, there's a zero way of getting there so let me let me show you a different way that might might simplify this. Let's say we're looking at a three by three grid. Okay. So we have three by three. And let's say we have an obstacle 
here. Okay, so if we have an obstacle there, then there's no way to get to this point from the above cell. We can only get to this, this finish line from this cell right there, okay? And so what we can do is we can fill in all these values as we normally would. We would have one, 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 one. This would be two. But then when we get here, it would be zero. Because there's an obstacle there, we refer to our input and ask in this cell, when we're trying to calculate the value for our table, is there an obstacle? Yes, there is. That means that the value there will be zero, okay? Now, when we're checking the uh, values here, we have two plus one, which is three. Then we, we can still add up, we can still add up this value here and this value here, and the final value will be three. Okay, and that makes sense because, let's take a look here, we can get to, we can get to this, um, the finish line from that path. We can get there from that path. Let's see, or we can get there from this path. So there is indeed three ways to, to get to the end. Okay, so let's go ahead and code this up and see, see if it makes more sense once we start coding this up. So first thing, what do we wanna do? We wanna create a table. And a good idea is maybe just fill in, fill in zeros on all that table. So we can do cons table, array dot from, length, this will be obstacle grid dot length. And then we just wanna fill in each cell of that grid or each, we wanna create our rows. And so we can do new array, we can do obstacle grid of zero dot length dot fill zero and all we're doing here I know it looks a little complicated but it's really not all we're doing with this line of code is we're just creating our grid and we're filling in uh, we're not filling in anything we're just creating a grid that's that's uh, a t or we're creating a table that is mapping to our grid and we're just filling it up with zeros so this input here obstacle grid we're creating a, a table based off of the grid, that obstacle grid size and just filling the whole thing up with zeros. Okay, now what we wanna do is we wanna fill in our initial values, right? And so let's take a look here. So if we have, if we're going through the grid and we're filling in our table, and if we have an obstacle right here, then that means everything else beyond this initial value would also have to be zero. This would have to be zero, that would have to be zero, that would have to be zero. Because we already filled in zeros initially when we made our table, all we have to do is break out. So if we're looping through this and we get down here and we realize that there is a there's an obstacle there, then we just break out of the 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 um, the loop, and our correct values will be filled in. Likewise, if there is an obstacle over here, and we're going and filling all these ones, when we get out of here, we can just break right there, and then these values will just remain zero. So let's move over here to the code. We can go for let i equals zero, i is less than table dot length, i plus plus. And now, again, we're just gonna check if there is an obstacle at our current iteration. So we can say um, if uh, let's see here. Obstacle grid of i zero equals one, then we just break. If there's no obstacle there, then we fill in that part of our table with one. Table of i zero equals one. And likewise, we're going to do the same thing for our. Uh, this is taking care of our columns. We're gonna do the same thing for our rows. So we'll just do table of zero dot length, and then we'll just swap these values. We'll do zero, put one there, put zero, whoops, and one there. Okay, so that is taking care of our table. We've created our initial table, and now what we wanna do is we wanna iterate over this table and fill in all the values. Okay, so we can do for let 
i equals one, i is less than table dot length. <coughs> I plus plus. And now we can go into our j loop. So let j equals zero j equals one. J is less than table of i dot length. All right. And so now again we want to check when we get to this cell if is there an obstacle there so if obstacle grid at i j equals one if there is there then we want to set that value of the table to zero okay we want to set that that value of the table to zero. We don't want to add anything. We just want to set it to zero because there's no path there because there's an obstacle. Likewise, if there is not an obstacle, then we just set our current value of our current cell to the sum of table of i minus one j plus table of i and j minus one. Okay, it's just a very similar pattern as unique paths one, and then all we want to do is just return that last element. Return table table dot length minus one table minus one. Now there is a slight bug here, and if you want to take a second and think about it, where could there be a bug? Well, let's think about this. We, we take care of most of all cases, but what if, what if we have an obstacle here in the starting point, right? That means we can't go anywhere. And so if we do that, our base case, we wanna have a base case that takes, that really looks at what do we do if there's an obstacle at the starting point. Likewise, what if we do this whole table, but there's an obstacle here at the end point, right? So we want to have a base case that deals with if there's an obstacle in the very beginning or if there's an obstacle at the very end. Because again, no matter what path we take, we cannot get to get to the end of the end of the uh, grid. So here we can just say if obstacle grid at zero uh, zero equals one return zero because there's no way to go anywhere and if obstacle grid of grid dot length minus one of grid of zero dot one if the very last element, there's an obstacle there, then we return zero as well. Okay, so we just, wanna, we just wanna make sure we take care of those two base cases. And that's it. Let's go ahead and run this. A small bug here. Uh, we just wanna make sure on line 17, we just wanna make that an I. And then on line 18 here, we wanna just make that an I as well. We can go ahead and run that. And we have success. So that is unique paths too. Uh, leak code number 63. I uh, hope you liked it and I will see you on the next one.